So Carl, you are you are professor of bioengineering and uh, psychiatry at the University of uh, Stanford. That's right. And uh, today you talk in a very exciting session uh, on uh, optogenetics here in Nice. So how does it work, optogenetics? What, what is it exactly? Optogenetics is a way of making cells, specific cells, within a living piece of tissue or a living organism responsive to light. And that gives an incredible amount of experimental power. You can flash light onto the animal or onto the, the tissue and you can control cells uh, with all the precision that flashes of light have with millisecond precision and depending on how well you can target the photosensitivity uh, cell type or even single cell uh, resolution as well. So it's a way to bring uh, very substantial uh, precision uh, to experimental uh, causal biology. If you make uh, cells sensitive or, or responsive to light, does it mean that you can switch on, switch off entire circuits? Can you create false memories, for example, in an animal? Uh, the short answer is yes. Uh, you can uh, either prevent memories from being recalled, prevent them from being laid down, or you can actually cause them, facilitate them uh, to be recalled and to be experienced again by the animal. If we imagine now, one day, that these tools might be applied to humans, and since you are in the clinic uh, regularly, what, what would be the major ethical issues that would be associated to, to application of optogenetics to, to humans? You might be able, in principle, to enhance function in ways that would cause ethical issues, to change function, to change uh, the, 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 the individuality in some way that would raise questions. And again, it's the precision that causes the problem. It's not that we don't do these things already by other means. It's not that you can't change yourself by talk therapy. You certainly can. It's not that drugs don't cause changes in your personality and how you interact with the world, they certainly do. But it's the precision that's the problem. The, if we see that as, as drugs, they would be even, they would be almost two perfect drugs in that way. In, in theory, in theory, in theory yeah. yes. Now, um, there could be other kinds of side effects, and this is why, you know, we have to be careful about this, this sort of thing. You know, you don't know whether there'll be an immune system reaction to these foreign proteins that you've introduced. So there would be other kinds of side effects, but in terms of the central nervous system evoked activity, yeah, they're, they're, in principle you have the potential for the, the, the least uh, untoward or undesired uh, physiological result. From the technological point of view, where do you see the field going in 10 years? What will be optogenetics sensitive to any colors, to other stimuli? Even uh, there are some limits. Uh, I don't think we'll uh, have as quite as many channels of control as there are cell types in the brain, for example. Uh, we have to figure out how to guide light better. We have to figure out uh, how to target cells better. Um, and then we have to just bring it to bear on the questions that interest us. And so I think the real exciting thing in the next 10 years will be the insight, the understanding that comes from the biological systems. There are so many mysteries in neuroscience and uh, you know, I, I think that's what the next 10 years will bring. We, we very much look forward to the next decade now. And thank you so much for, for answering to, to our questions. Thanks. My, my pleasure. Thank you.